test out the mics. I always forget to ask the cleaning crew to please wipe it down. <laughs> There's so many gross little marks. I'll look at it. Yeah, we're on live. Okay, I'm starting the mic check here. This is mic number one. Mic number one, test, test, one, two, three, mic number one. Mic number one. Microphone number two, microphone number two, 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 mic two, mic two. Microphone number three, super mic. Mic number three, super mic. Prez mic, mic four, mic four, prez mic. Mic four, prez mic. Mic five, five, cinco, five. Microphone six, mic six, 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 microphone six. And lastly, podium mic if we need it. One, two, three. One, two, three. Anyone listening online, go see Wizard of Oz this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at Grand Island High School in the auditorium. Thank you. It'll be a great show. Lots of colors. Bye. Hey, Mark. Uh, you're on live.
I got her lessons and everything. I was like, and they tell us this that was never discussed. There's four meetings to go to meeting, right? The agenda from the town board was on there, but there was nothing about the school board. So how do we make a special, special request to change this tonight? For tonight, you've got a number of parents here to talk about masking, to voice their opinion to both the school board and the town. How can we change this? Why? Why can't we request it? Okay, I'm going to go in and request it. Yes, it's all in the large cafeteria is all set. Okay. 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 Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming to our joint town board meeting. Uh, at this time, if you could stand up and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. It's a real pleasure to welcome our town council here today. Uh, maybe if we could go around and introduce ourselves, that would be great. And Tom, if you could get us started. Is that better? Yes. Christian Blade, town council. John Whitney, town supervisor. Brian Graham, Superintendent. Ashley Dreyer, School Board President. Nicole Novak, School Board Trustee. Nicole School Board Trustee. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. So uh, today we do have some items on the agenda, and I think the first set of items is regarding upcoming projects from the town. Thank you, Brian. Uh, just a, one of the few things we're doing uh, next year, we're going to be going into construction with sidewalks on Baseline Road, which will extend all the way from uh, all the way down to Web Road from the town center. Um, another project that's been being talked about right now is the River Town project. If you people are not aware of it, that's bounded by Web Road to the south, Baseline to the west, Grand Island Boulevard to the east. 
um, land in there that uh, partially has some different zones are applying right now for a rezoning to yeah. what's called a PDD, that's a Planned Development District. Um, if they get that, that allows them to uh, design their project, and then once their project is approved, that really, in, assess in essence, becomes the zoning. Or, uh, another large project coming before the town is South Point. People have probably heard about that. That's been around since uh, about 1990. So about 30 years of, in existence already, been morphed through many different configurations. They have five different phases planned for that project that also is already a PDD. Um, they want to do a assisted living near Staley and Baseline. They want to do townhouses uh, in from Staley Road, east of that, along with some apartments. They want to do some single family roads coming off a stub on the end of Cal Road. And uh, some single family homes in the Baseline Love Road area as well. The Aquest project, the 800-pound uh, gorilla in the room, that is proposed to be a 1 million square foot warehouse. No, that's not. Currently, they are in the process of the seeker review. The town declared a positive declaration for that project, which means they have to go through and perform a supplemental environmental impact statement. The purpose of a supplemental environmental impact statement versus a full impact statement is it allows us to keep all of the previous comments that were issued for the project in play. Um, there's many, many different things on that project. It has a long way to go. We have approved the draft scoping document for that. That's part of the SEEKER process. SEEKER, for those of you that don't know, is an acronym stands for State Environmental Quality Review Act. That's the law. And then the actual SEEKER is a State Environmental Quality Review. Um, that's, that project has a long way to go. That's, that property is the, uh, it's owned M1. It's uh, bounded by the New York State Thruway to the east, um, the Dell Road to the south, Long Road to the north. There is another project that was going to be townhouses at the corner of East River and Whitehaven Road. It was formerly known as Lighthouse Point. I don't believe it actually has a name at this point. They're asking for a rezoning of a portion of the property, which is zoned B1, and they were they want the whole thing to be a residential zoning, where they want to build a, a series of townhouses for this project. Uh, another one that's uh, in construction and been in construction for several years already is the Gun Creek subdivision. They're planning another phase of that. Um, that is off Whitehaven Road across from the uh, Cornerstone Church. Item two, garbage totes. Our solid waste collection contractor is Casella, and they have proposed to give out garbage totes to everyone. There is no charge for these. They are the same as the recycling totes that you have. We are not making any changes in the collection contract, but it's just that this actually puts us in compliance with Erie County Health Department laws. Um, then we want to talk to the school about recreation opportunities. Does anybody have any questions first about uh, any of those upcoming projects? Uh, yeah, if you could just, uh, John, if you could just clarify who they are uh, briefly for each one of the um, items, like for example, with um, Aquas, um, they have to go through a seeker. Who is they? Just Aquas is the actual name of the development company. Okay. That's doing it. All right, and then um, they for they want to rezone for the townhouses at East River and Whitehaven. Who, right. uh, who the Frank, company is? Frank Bank is the owner of that property, mm -hmm. and he's asking for a rezone. And he, Frank developed uh, quite a bit of River Oaks. He was the former owner of the River Oaks Golf Course. Okay, and then Rivertown and Rivertown um, is uh, Roger Treadle, and what's Frank's? Frank's name that we've got. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I can't. I, I'm, I'm drawing the blank. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's all right. Roger I just Trow, wanted to. Roger Trowell is on Red Island. Okay. All right. So South Point is the one. 
sure South Point is owned by a gentleman by the name of Harold Schertz. Scheid Architectural has been doing the, uh, the plans for that project. I don't know how much further they're going to continue with them, but they pass that off to a civil design firm or an architectural firm. All right, thank you. I just wanted to no, no just Please. clarify feel, for yeah, everyone who, 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 so who they was, who they was for each uh, project. Just wondering if there's a timeline at some point at all at this point, or we don't have any any projects that have actually been um, they're they're proposed at this point, but I, we have to go through as many different reviews that have to happen. We have to get approval from New York State DEC to extend sanitary sewers. Uh, Erie County Health Department for extension of water lines, um, Corps of Engineers, DEC, you know, all the process on wetlands and stuff, which they're, they're pretty well through that, though, so. Thanks. One uh, project that was not mentioned was 871 Whitehaven, the solar Whitehaven project. Solar farm. So that's actually going to be on the agenda for the next meeting, which is a week from tonight. And that's going to be, so 871, that's over near the golf course, right? Yes. Yeah. Climate Towers. So right between the gun right, golf it's, course it's and the gun range. They're right about the end of Harvey Road. Looking to put in a solar farm over there. And uh, so we're talking to Seeker uh, a week from tonight. We're going to declare lead agency for the town. That's really the essence of what that is the initial step in Seeker. Um, so, excuse me, I speak. So just to bounce off what, what John said about these projects, um, the ones that are probably going to really um, be of interest to the school is likely South Point and probably uh, Gun Creek because they are the single-family homes. Um, that's what you're going to see. There are, there's a small component of single-family homes at Rivertown in their proposed plan, but it, I, I, I'm pretty... I can't say for sure, but it, it seems very likely that that's going to be more of a 55 and up kind of draw. Um, so just to keep that in mind, your population is probably going to come from Sun Street and from South Point because there's a couple neighborhoods in there. And people we have some residents are kind of not necessarily here but right now, but you know, how many homes we're talking about and how many... It, it changes. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. I, I figure, you know, but just, just not necessarily right now with this meeting, but yeah. if, if information can be provided that generally gives some guidance in terms of how much of our population, I think that would be helpful because mm -hmm. that's what we're really thinking about. Yeah, you're trying to figure out long term. Yeah. 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 Understood. Thank you. Well, I don't know what I was trying to ask. <laughs> I know, but I, I, I talked to people. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. John, how does one get a new garbage tote? They're going to deliver it. Oh, okay, great. They will drop them at your house. Uh, when is that delivery? One second, if it's during the winter, one second to do our snowboards that are not. Well, it's, if, if they notice that the tote is, we've asked that question of them, and if they notice that the tote is just sitting outside, you know, for more than a week, they'll pick it up, make note of it, okay. and then come back in the springtime a little bit later. They're talking about starting in March. John, what did you want to talk about with recreation efforts? Um, we're always hurting for space for recreation, um, getting gyms, things of that. So if anything that we can do to improve that for our programs, um, if your person can work with Joe, mentor on that, that would be fantastic. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Great. And then we talked about, uh, we briefly had a conversation, um, shared services for recreation transportation. If, uh, for us to buy a bus, it really isn't, you know, conducive for a rec program. We don't use it that often, but um, if, if there's some opportunities out there, we'd like to investigate that. Yeah, that's a good idea. I know that Teresa Lee's they took a look at a spreadsheet of different field trips, and she thinks they're all perfect. The only ones that she would struggle with would be on uh, field trips that are on a holiday. So other than that, everything else should be a goal with us. Okay, great. Brian, Brian how about the summer? Yeah, summer shouldn't be a problem either. Okay, good, yep. good, okay. Good. Joel will be excited to hear that. I'll let you do that. Sure.
Sure. And actually, um, just, just to introduce it, because this is my topic that I brought up, um, I would like all of us to have a quick, not necessarily quick, but a substantial um, discussion on the mandates. Um, the following will only take me a minute to read off. Um, many parents are telling us with much emotion and fear, based on their direct experience with their children, the mass mandates are harming their children's mental, social, and emotional health and their educational development, harming them. What evidence is there of a positive mandate impact compared to the known likely long-term harm that is occurring to, student, to many students? Look at Florida compared to New York. Florida with no mask mandate, Florida has a larger state population and a million more of the highest risk seniors over 65. 25% more seniors than New York State, and a lower death rate, the data does exist, mandates have failed. It is time to let the children begin to heal and recover from the trauma we have put them through. What we are continuing to do is wrong, and we know it. We have the data now. The CDC has provided guidance that if a person wears an N95 or a KN95 mask, they are protected. Therefore, what the students do does not impact the teacher's safety. Protecting others is no longer a reason for mandates. A proper mask provides protection and does not depend on others to wear a mask. No. Coercive threats by the New York State Education Department of pulling funding is unethical when it comes to protecting children. We must not permit such unethical behavior and threats to be tolerated or to prevent taking appropriate action. We must embrace taking on that fight proudly against such behavior. How can the town council support you in this fight, Brian? You and the, the entire board. Thank you, Mike. Um, I have some closing comments related to masks, so I'll wait for my closing comments. I would like some kind of a discussion, if we could, because well, kind of a well, back and well, forth. Michael, I appreciate it. This is a this is a school board town board meeting. Okay? And I think what you're talking about is, is a school board matter. Okay? So if you want to come to the next school board meeting and speak about this issue, we'd be happy to listen to you as a private citizen. Okay? Well, so this is what the 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 list of okay? This is a yeah. town board school board. Meeting, okay? And we are here to talk about issues that that relate to, you know, uh, mutual issues in that regard. This is a school board matter, Matt Sandy. If you want to speak at a school board meeting, you are welcome to come out, you are welcome to dialogue with us on that, and have an opportunity to speak on this. This is not a forum for this to occur, okay? So we're not going to dialogue with you on our, our school board policies on mass mandates during this meeting. Okay. So, so I would just like to add. No, no, no. We're not. Let, let him speak. Let him speak. Let him speak. Hold on. That's so disrespectful. No, if you, want, if you want to speak generally about it, you can do that. We allow you to speak okay. about it. We are not going to debate or talk about, okay, at this meeting, that particular issue. It's a school board issue, okay, that can be involved I've, at a school board level. You want to come? I have one question, Doug. Let, let me finish. Okay. At a school board meeting, we can do that. Okay? This is not an issue that the town board okay, is going to come, and I don't know if the town board is just you, because I, I don't know that. Okay? He's going to come to this meeting and try to address this issue here. Come to a school board meeting, talk to us about it as a private citizen. So. I do think the parents are owed a substantial we, 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 discussion we, we, on the topic, we, 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 we open it in the public, and, 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 and I do think the town board does have input on making sure our schools are successful. <laughs> all community leaders, whether it's your assemblyman, your senate, your town board, your your dog catcher cares about our kids' health, and if what we're doing is harming them, if the state education department is putting mandates down that they knowingly, at this point, the data exists, the data exists that shows that, Glenn, you, you, you want me finish. So the state education department is doing things that is doing more harm than good. 
I think there's a point where we need to stand up and take that fight to them and say, no, this must stop. is allowing continued harm to the children. How can we allow that? How can we allow that, Glenn? Think about that. You are elected to protect the children. So, Mike, I thank you for bringing up your concerns. I share with you. Hang on, no, you guys report to the people. Let me speak. No, 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 no. You guys report to the people. Sir, parents showed up tonight. They want to be heard. We deserve to be heard. So, for our people in the audience, we will adjourn the meeting if you are disruptive. Thank you for listening. So you might as well. Mike, yeah. thanks. Adjourn the meeting. Now, now let's keep going. Let's so allow if, Brian if to if speak. If you continue please. to be disruptive, we will adjourn the meeting. Are you going to continue to be disruptive? Are you going to adjourn the meeting? Are you going to continue to be disruptive? Are you going to adjourn the meeting? So you, you understand what I just laid out. So if you continue to be disruptive, we will adjourn. There are so other Mike, I do. people in the audience here outside of the mask mandate. I understand it's emotionally charged, but point of position, guys, we, we do need for you guys to listen. This is a courtesy to you guys. Please, we, I understand we're all upset about this, and as you heard, with their school board meeting, that they, they welcome it, but let's just try and keep this no, associated with... No, they don't. With no, they, don't. they don't. They don't return emails. No nothing. Okay. So Still waiting, Dr. Graham, for your email response. Your concerns. Okay. Still waiting. Mm -hmm. The next item is Joint Wellness Committee. <laughs> Looking for an update. I know that we have a few of our members here on the Joint Wellness Committee. I don't know, Sue, if you want to talk. I know um, going forward we are looking to some changes in um, some of the services, different, maybe more hours, some different thoughts on that. Um, we are looking for two new town board members to join our committee. Oh, I don't know if I can't emphasize enough with what we're doing to the kids right now, the drug, the alcohol, the, the bad thoughts, which we won't get into, especially young girls who, are, who have a bigger struggle from all the data that we're reading about out there. I think we need to really up our game in this particular area. If there's anything the town board can do to support doing the next right thing to help out making sure our students are protected and that we're not doing further harm and further traumatizing them, I think we need to do that. Cheryl, do you just, do you have, did you bring anything sure. to so, update on everything so, that's yeah, been done? So, current, current, so currently, um, you know, Mike and, and you are part of this, um, we've, we've actually added um, Catholic Charities. We're still trying to um, work out some of the um, logistics with Catholic Charities. Um, on, on Mondays, Horizons Health Services is in district office seeing children. Um, on Tuesdays, we have Erie County Social Services um, there. On uh, Wednesdays, um, we have filed family child and services. We're trying to get them back because their clinician left. So we are still working with them. Jessica Hutchings and I reach out to them on a regular basis. They're in the process of hiring another clinician to take over Katie Jafari. Um, and then Gateway, um, it has been in our Pegabine and our cute road building on Fridays half of the day in the morning and half of the day in the afternoon. However, their clinician left as well. Um, so they're in the process of hiring on that. So we meet on a regular basis. Jessica and I probably meet every other week to uh, discuss where we're at and trying to make sure that these people are staying on top of getting clinicians. And then also we're still doing the monthly um, parent nights um, a couple of months ago, there was anxiety. Uh, there's an anxiety presentation. Um, this month, I believe there's one on cannabis and its effect on um, child brains. And then upcoming, um, I just met with her on, I think it was Thursday. I know Dr. Grand, you stopped in, and we're going to do something on um, the board of digital citizenship piece um, for our next um, here. And, and you know, I really think, in light of what's happened over the last two years, we need to up our game, especially with parents dealing with kids with anxiety in particular, um, fear, fear, continually fearing death because this is constantly in front of them. I do think that we need to relook at the program and maybe retool it 
Um, and I would, I would appreciate if we could get this started again with two board members and really see how can the town help, I mean, whether it's facilities or other ways in which we can provide some assistance, people, counselors, et cetera. Um, how can we share our effort to try and address the growing concern that exists? And some of this damage that's going on is long-term. We really need to try and do things to try and limit the continued trauma so that the next, um, so it doesn't get worse than it already is. Chair, those, some of those programs are streamed. Uh, the, parent, the parent nights are streamed, yes, yeah, so that um, what we decided to do this year is live, is live stream them instead of being able to go back and look at them. We found that the live streaming attracts more people. People have good intentions. And they say, oh, I'm going to look at it on Thursday, and then they forget. So we're, we're, the live streaming seems to be the best. We didn't have as much of a great turnout for the most recent one, but I believe the first one on um, account of anxiety had over 100. And, 32 people that actually viewed it. So we'll see where we're at with the digital citizenship one coming up. So um, we'll, be, we'll see how many people join that as well. When it's live streamed, it is archived and it's available on our website as well. Cheryl, not to belabor this a little longer, but I know that we've added a psychologist to our team we to have. support with crisis services and crisis uh, support for kids. We've also engaged in some summer programs for kids who needed extra help uh, before school started this year. Is there anything else that I'm missing? Any other elementary counselors or anything that we've added? Um, so we didn't add, but we had a changeover in one of our elementary counselors that um, we hired uh, two years ago. Um, she just started this year. She has been um, instrumental um, in organizing um, several community um, things along with you know, seeing our children. Um, as, as Dr. Graham said, we did, uh, we did hire a new school psychologist. She actually is district-based instead of being attached to the building right now. She started January 18th. Um, she's helping out with crisis counseling um, in the high school on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, she's working with uh, Lauren Stang at Sidway on one of the other um, days, on Tuesdays, and then on Thursday, she still needs to, you know, our elementary school. So we're trying to give her um, an opportunity to um, really focus on our students at the high school because we really need some help there right now, uh, but also to get to know all of the um, TPS uh, staff in the district and our children K-12 so that we have that extra support. So much needed and much needed. Thank you, Cheryl. Sure. I think it's important to mention about the program in the middle school as well. There's a few years old now that we've asked resources to move back to the middle school. So just to accentuate that, uh, our eighth graders, I think we have 32 eighth graders who are trained and identified as mentors to new to sixth grade students. Every sixth grade student that comes from an elementary school to our middle school has a mentor. And those are eighth grade students who mentor those kids. And the program is called Where Everybody Belongs. It, we started it before COVID. Uh, you may remember when we opened school up, the web team did an instrumental job in helping kids feel comfortable, you know, transitioning from elementary to middle school this year. So thanks, Jay, for mentioning that web program. It's uh, very instrumental, Cheryl. Um, and then also, uh, we did get some funding, and I forgot this piece, and we got some extra funding um, this year from the federal government. Um, we have been able to get the Level. So Jessica Hutchings is acting as a coach right now, helping to, you know, really um, solidify the family support services. And um, we've got some extra support for middle school students. Her name is Ellen Ubar, and she has really, really um, made some great relationships with our students. Nice to have you. So added social workers, we do have elementary counselors, secondary counselors, and now we have six psychologists, and we have five school buildings. So, uh, so there's been a lot of work done to support um, all children in all in all levels. <coughs> Any questions from the town? Oh, awesome. I, I mean, we are looking for a few town board members. We, we have a meeting. We have um, kind of a new initiative. So we kind of brought Jay on. We kind of got some, all new people in our community. So I don't know. Um, who would like to join us? If you guys don't want to do that tonight, just have a conversation and let us know and 
Cheryl and I will set up our meeting. And if it needs to be virtual, uh, just for time's sake or whatever, you know, we have done them in person and virtually, so whatever anybody would like to do, we're open to that as well. Very good. So, John, I do want to thank Officer Ryan. He's the officer in charge of our Grand Island Police for all that he does to support our schools. Uh, he really has been instrumental. I can call him day or night. He is responsive. There have been times where I have contacted him uh, very late at night, uh, and he and I have personally gone on some home visits together. So Bob Ryan has been outstanding, and he's been working hard to help fill a gap right now with our school resource officer. As you know, we have an agreement with the town. We had a retirement. Yes. I mean, yeah. a, a, another one with some health issue. Correct. So right now, uh, I understand that Officer Franz mm -hmm. is in the corner over there hiding, mm -hmm. trying to hide. He's too big to hide. <laughs> <laughs> um, and along with uh, Officer Lipsey, yes. are going to be platooning to perform the SRO functions. Yeah, it's excellent. And Tom uh, and Troy uh, walked the buildings today. I was very uh, appreciative of uh, Tom extending himself to introduce tr uh, Troy to our principals and our, our different uh, building administrators and showing him uh, all the buildings and getting him acclimated. So, uh, Tom, thanks for your uh, help with that. I appreciate it. And uh, it kind of leads me to another issue or concern that we've heard from the community with respect to drop off in the morning in front of our secondary campus here. Um, you know, I know that the town and school can work together uh, to help us monitor the parent drop off. We have uh, some drivers who are going around vehicles on the shoulder. Uh, we have kids who are crossing inappropriately at the wrong points uh, in front of the school. We do have one crosswalk, uh, but Sometimes kids uh, don't walk down to that and they try to cross in front of the school. I do know that the, your travel, uh, or your safety, your travel, what is it called? Your travel, your safety traffic. board? Traffic safety. Traffic, traffic safety, traffic thank traffic you. Traffic 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 you know, took a look at that as well. Okay. Uh, but we, we could certainly use some help and maybe now that uh, Tom and Troy are here, they could also assist us. But yeah, We know. can get together and uh, sit down and discuss this and see what we can do to improve the situation. Yeah, that would be very helpful. I appreciate that. Thank you. Any other comments from anybody else around the table about that? All right. So, um, so Cheryl talked about digital citizenship, and I just want to tell a story uh, to the town board. On Thursday, December 16th, I sent out a communication around 5.45 at night uh, to families about a TikTok um, challenge that was out there uh, and the challenge was uh, having every school feel unsafe uh, that they would be involved across the United States with some kind of school shooting. And they were trying to get people to, to post this kind of misinformation or threatening information on the next day, on Friday the 17th. So I sent out a communication uh, to our families around 5.45 at night about that TikTok challenge encouraged families to go to our biking tip line which is right on our website any family member any community member can go to that biking tip line it's an anonymous uh, tip if, if they feel so inclined that anonymous tip goes directly to our principals and to Cheryl Cardone and uh, there's also you know uh, other other ways to get a hold of us but uh, I do uh, want to share with you that evening at around 7:30 at night I actually visited two households uh, because there was a, a, a serious rumor going around our, our community. And I went personally and visited two families. I want to thank those parents for cooperating with me and then later on in the next day with our school administration. Eventually, when I got home that night, around 9.30, uh, a parent informed me that there was a threat circulating on social media that appeared to identify our high school as a, as a possible school shooting for the next day. Uh, when I did my investigation, it was evident that students were sharing screenshots of a threat that, that uh, originated from downstate in Florida. And when I talk about digital citizenship, uh, what I'm getting at is that we have almost our own epidemic occurring where young children are sharing and reposting threats that they see online as if it was something you know real for others to see. 
And in my investigation that night, I, I, it was very, it was, it was good that I was able to talk to each parent. But as I went down the line, you know, student A received it from student B on their private Snapchat story. Student B received it from student C, you know, who texted it to that person, and so on and so on. And eventually I did get to the root of the original person that sent it. That person was from out of state and sent it to a child here in Grand Island uh, via text. And I guess what I'm saying is that we have a situation where we're seeing more and more that sometimes our students and adults are not uh, responsible digital citizens. So I did ask Cheryl Cardone and Roger Broker, our high school principal, uh, to meet with some students last week. Uh, and we have a nice cross-section of students from 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade who meet with Roger and I on a regular basis. Well, Cheryl and Roger met with them to talk about this very issue. And Roger and Cheryl, I know that you got excellent feedback from our students in 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. They gave really informative uh, ideas and suggestions. And one of the suggestions that came from that group of students is they would like to be heavily involved in doing student assemblies at the middle school about the unintended consequences of sharing and resharing and reposting. I think, Roger, you did have a chance to talk to Mr. Fitzpatrick as well, so I thank both of you for that. And I just want the community to know how important it is that students, when they see something uh, that is concerning, that they share it with a trusted adult and not repost or reshare it, because it puts them at jeopardy as well, right? Because it causes panic, it causes anxiety, and it could result in consequences for students who are reposting and sharing threats. So we really need to nip this in the bud. I think the students uh, came up with a good plan, Mr. Broker and Ms. Cardone, to uh, help educate. I think when students hear it from students themselves, as opposed to students hearing it from adults, uh, they may sit up and take notice. Uh, so we're really going to be putting a lot of effort in reducing the amount of sharing and resharing of these kinds of threats. Uh, to that end, again, calling Bob Ryan. He made sure that I had the Erie County Sheriff's here in my office. We worked until about midnight that, that night to resolve this. Uh, I appreciate so much Bob's support and the Sheriff's support in that kind of investigation. And we're going to be looking forward to a student-led assembly for students. And I'm also suggesting that we have a student-led uh, parent program, uh, again, with students taking the lead in educating our parents, not only about the dangers of sharing and resharing, but also some of the tricks and techniques that parents can uh, follow to help uh, monitor what's happening with their children. Does anybody have any questions about digital citizenship? All right. Good. So I just wanted to give that uh, report. So I think that brings us to closing comments, John. Board, so yeah. I'll let Robert, Robert. Well, I'll start by saying it's I've been serving on the town board for almost 25 months, and this is the first time I've been able to participate in the joint town and school board meeting, so I'm glad that we're back together in the same room and we'll be doing this. Um, aside from that, John touched all the projects that are going on. We're working hard trying to keep the wheels on. Um, I do want to echo Mike's comments to some degree about the mass and just have a dialogue about it. But if there is anything that we as a board can do, when you guys figure out where you want to go, please don't hesitate to let us know. You know, I've got a son who started pre-K three just before the pandemic, and he basically doesn't know school without mass. And I know Danielle's an attorney, and Glenn, and I've now spent time picking a couple of juries with mass on. It's not easy. You can't get the facial expressions. You can't read people. And, and you know, given where my son is age-wise, he's these are the foundational times where he learns how to do that stuff. And that so there's a lot of stuff that's going on. It is important, but so is keeping the kids safe. And if there's anything that we can do to, to help you guys out, please don't hesitate. So. People of good conscience must speak out. These mandates are causing harm. We've been doing this for two years. We know it. 
I'm really disappointed we couldn't have an open dialogue on this. Um, it's not a secret. We shouldn't be keeping it quiet. We know we're doing harm. We need to raise that up to New York State education and say this has got to stop. We know we're doing harm. We're not protecting kids. We're not mitigating risk. The, the, the masks, can, the COVID or the N95 and the K95, the CDC says, are safe or can protect you. So we don't need the children, if they choose, they should have a choice whether to wear a mask or not. We're traumatizing the kids. We need to speak up. We can't stay silent. We need people, every one of us are responsible whether, as elected officials and appointed officials. Um, a joint letter would be great going up to New York State Ed saying this has got to stop. Our, our, our residents are de demanding some action. Others aren't. And if they choose to work, continue wearing a mask, that's a choice. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess I just want to compliment you on um, some of this stuff that's going on. I had no idea that you had that type of outreach going for, um, you know, psychiatrists and all that stuff. I'm, I'm kind of, I, I won't say I'm excited about it, but, but it's, it's nice to know that resource exists. I had no idea. Um, yeah, good stuff. I, I'll also say that many of your students come to our town board meetings unprepared. <laughs> they <laughs> they ask them questions homework. frequently, <laughs> and they're supposed to pass along to their, their classmates, and they do not. So, My son did get, so, uh, de not detention, but I grounded for that. Yeah, <laughs> so you need to talk to them about that a little bit. If, 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 if it's going to continue, I'm going to have to up the game a little bit. <laughs> Thank you, Pete. Besides that, thank you. Yeah. Just before we go around the table, I think um, there's one person without a mask. If you could put a mask on, that'd be great. Tom and Bob are here to remind you. Okay. Go ahead, Christian. Well, I just want to say uh, it was really endearing hearing about that Joint Wellness Committee and everything that you guys have done. Um, I've had a family member come to addiction. It's a very serious point with me. Uh, I went to school for criminal administration, learned about the dangers of drug and addiction, and it's really nice to know there's that resource. Um, I'm not going to dialogue. I, I understand. Uh, I want you guys to understand nobody up here wants masks on children. Nobody's up here with that goal. Um, I apologize for the lack of clarity on the intentions of what tonight's meeting was. This was for the school board and the town board to discuss our agenda here. Um, I don't want anybody to feel like they've been muted. Go to your school board meeting, have your voice be heard. That's all I can say about that. Uh, I can't say go Bills, but sadly, we are no longer the playoffs. Yes, they've gone. <laughs> they've gone. They've gone. We'll pass around the table. I'd just like to thank uh, the town board members and uh, John for joining us here um, this evening. I'm looking forward to a continued collaboration on everything from shared services to the wellness committee and other committees as well. And um, it's nice to all be back in the same room. So thank you. Well, I just wanted to announce that July 18th is our <laughs> <Yorkville> golf tournament. <laughs> I like the poster child. Um, so make sure you mark the dates, get your four some secured defense to come. The monies that are raised go to um, our students here in a scholarship program, and I think we're currently giving out is it five or six, five or six scholarships each year. So the money raised at that golf tournament goes right back to our students. So July 18th, River Oaks, mark the calendar. Mr. Crawford, did you hear that? That's all. Um, just thank everyone for coming. It's nice to be back and be out together again and be able to work on things together to help everyone else out. That's all. Uh, so I was just recently elected last year, and this is my first joint session, and I thank you for being here. I look forward to continuing to work with the town. And I just like back with those thoughts. After three years, unfortunately, this is only my second joint meeting. So it's great to be back in, uh, in this format. Uh, Thank you for all the updates, and also as a new member on the Wellness Committee, thank you to Cheryl and Sue and everyone else that has continued uh, you know, through the pandemic with this and to add all those resources for our kids. It's, it's impressive, and I look forward to being a part of it. Um, it's not my first <laughs> <laughs> Tom, um, Kristen, everybody. So we, we understand 
certainly that you know, folks don't want that. We don't want that. Okay? And we want to try to work with everybody to not have masks in schools right now. Okay? Personally, um, I'm thrilled that we've been able to have school here um, and since September on. And, and uh, you know, and, and without having the, any closures, okay? I am hopeful that the mask mandate will go away as soon as possible. And anything that we can do, you know, collectively to help that along, I certainly would appreciate it, okay? Um, I think that my comments before was that this is not designed, this meeting here, to have that dialogue. I mean, in terms of a debate about it, okay? So we are, at least I am, okay? Um, my goal since, since um, the summer on was to keep schools open this year without going virtually, okay? That's very, very important. Okay. Are there issues with masks? Of course there are. I have not met anybody who says they like wearing masks. Okay. We need to get rid of them. I think it's going to probably happen very soon. Okay. I think politically that's going to happen very soon. Okay. And let's hopefully that will occur very shortly. We won't have to have this dialogue and debate with respect to people. So let's get it done. We'll continue to move forward. Keep the schools open. Keep the kids there. I think it's much better than last year. Okay, and we got to keep it going. Okay, number one. Number two, and more importantly, okay, um, the high school musical is this week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay, it's at the school. Hopefully, we don't have a snowstorm and it goes to get down. Okay, but uh, it's uh, Thursday at 7 o'clock, Friday at 7 o'clock, Saturday at 6 o'clock. Okay, as I said to the last board meeting, my daughter is a witch. It has nothing to do with my wife. Uh, or anything like that, but it's, it's supposed to be a good show. And we'll be wearing a mask, and I'm not happy about that, but I'm happy that she's doing the high school musical. Okay, that's great. Thank you. John? I want to thank uh, Dr. Graham and the school board for hosting this meeting. Uh, I think it's very important that we do get together uh, periodically and have an exchange of ideas and uh, updates on where you're going, what you're doing, and the things that we're doing so that you have a better understanding of what we do and we have a better understanding of what you do. Along with Tom, this too is my first joint school board meeting. 25 months in office, and this is the first time we've been able to get together. This pandemic is uh, over. not good. Hopefully it's over. Um, again, masks, I would, I would appreciate if, if there is something that we can do to help. I would uh, gladly, we can pass a town board resolution, we can sign a joint letter, okay, whatever we can do to, to, to say help word. out, we'd be, we'd be for that. Um, and uh, one other thing that I want to mention is not on our agenda, but you guys were the first schools to institute the test to stay program. I just saw another school on the news tonight mm -hmm. that is doing that as well. You guys were the front leaders on it, and uh, it's, it's keeping kids in school, and that's an important thing. I really yes. appreciate that. Thank you. Welcome. That's all I have. Good. So thank you. So a lot of people in the community and around the table know that last week was challenging with respect to the Nassau County Supreme Court decision on masks that came out last Monday evening. Uh, and then the next afternoon there was a stay on that uh, decision. Uh, as you also may be aware, uh, last Friday there was a deadline for plaintiffs to submit uh, their legal briefs regarding that challenge. And um, some are speculating that the Second Department of Public Court will provide a decision on a more long-lasting stay it is likely we won't have that decision for weeks. So just in case you were wondering about that. You also may be aware that there was some confusion. Uh, Governor Hochul announced several dates. On Friday, Governor Hochul announced that there was a statewide indoor masking mandate that was due to expire on February 1st, and that she extended that to February 10th. That particular date <clears throat> is regarding uh, us as the general public going into Wegmans and Tops and restaurants that was supposed to expire on the 1st, now it's set to expire on the 10th. Also, another date in February, February 15th, a declaration of COVID as a serious public health threat expires under the HEROES Act. Have you got, are you guys familiar with that? Okay. So that is set to expire on the 15th, and I believe that's for employees who are uh, front-facing uh, service providers in our communities all across the state. So again, these uh, declarations do not have anything to do with schools. So, uh, however, she also announced that on the 21st, the emergency regulation that empowers the Commissioner of Health to mandate masks also expires. 
So it'll be very interesting to see if those dates, you know, one was just extended to the 10th, there's the 15th and 21st. So these, these uh, mandates could slowly start to uh, become, you know, moot issues in across the state. So I wanted to make sure that the town government is aware of those dates and some of those things to look forward to. Superintendents across New York State have and continue to advocate for our kids. Uh, we send regular communications to the governor. Uh, we have another letter going out this week asking for off-ramp uh, to mask requirements. So uh, our Erie and Niagara School Superintendents Association does a really good job in advocating, and that is something that we're advocating for. The last time that we had communication with them uh, was uh, several uh, weeks and months ago, and we continue to ask for their support in off-ramp language to the mask mandates. Uh, the crux of our argument has always been that the state owes it to families and schools to set reasonable expectations to return to normalcy. Uh, right now, we believe that they haven't uh, done that, and we are engaging them and wanting them to do that. We need to know what the metrics look like so that we can have a safe uh, off-ramp to this pandemic. Uh, additionally, if we do see changes with mask mandates and masking becomes optional, we will also need to see changes to the current state quarantine rules. So right now, basically, quarantine rules would need to be adjusted if mask mandates went away. Students that are properly masked and greater than three feet in distancing and who are also vaccinated are exempt from close contact quarantines. So is that going to change if the masks go away? So it's, it's uh, not only do we need to advocate for, for you know, uh, options for families, but we also need to know what we then are restricted uh, with respect to identifying close contacts. Absent adjustments to things like this, schools could face uh, more students in quarantines, which is not helpful. Luckily, we do have that test to stay program now. Our goal must now be to transition from COVID-19 pandemic into an endemic, uh, a highly, which is of course a highly contagious virus that is manageable and allows us to regain a sense of normalcy. Uh, as it stands now, the mask mandate uh, remains in effect, of course, for schools across the state and we know that these issues stir very strong feelings. All that I ask is that for parents, staff, students, visitors, and other leaders in our community to show respect to school officials who are trying to support the educational process. We all need to be mindful of the example we are setting for our children. Today I talked about digital citizenship. We all need to be mindful on how we conduct ourselves not only in person, but also uh, behind our keyboards. The more we model civility and respect in, our, in and around our school environments, the better off I think we would all agree we all will be. I do want to thank the town uh, board for meeting with us tonight. I believe our next meeting is May 23rd. Jude, is that sound correct? Next meeting is May 23rd at Town Hall. And John, you're running the show over there that night. So I do thank everybody, and I wish everybody a good night. And please do pay attention to the weather. We do know that there could be a storm coming uh, this Thursday. Thank you very much. <laughs>